Today, we're going to be talking about Elon Musk and why do so many people think he's the best thing since sliced AI bread? Is it because he's so intelligent? Is it because he's so charming and enigmatic? Is it because he's clearly so disturbed but yet so clever at hiding it that people are just under his spell? A lot of the things Elon Musk talks about with health and the brain and the mind, the capabilities of AI, the unhindered natural human condition as we move ahead will far surpass whatever AI can possibly give to humanity. After all, humanity was designed under the image of God in perfection. Nothing can beat it. Nothing we make can beat it. Humanity often makes the false assumption that we are better than nature at health, therefore we invent pharmaceuticals. They think that we are better than nature as science. So let's now compare two different types of personality, two different types of intelligence. One of them would be, I would say, let's take Elon Musk first, for example, completely technological, completely scientific, devoid of all emotion and feeling. Um, a child in emotion and an adult in the mind, followed by someone else, Thomas Cowan, who's much more rounded as an individual, an adult in the mind and an adult in emotion. And see if you can spot the difference between the two and which one you prefer and why. Because the difference is about the end or not the end of human civilization as we know it. This is an existential threat. Which one of these two characters poses an existential threat on humanity? Can you tell the difference? So, uh, late fall of 1917, there was the introduction of radio waves around the world. Whenever you expose any biological system to a new electromagnetic field, you poison it, you kill some, and the rest go into a kind of suspended animation so that, interestingly, they live a little bit longer and sicker. And then starts in World War II with the next pandemic with the introduction of radar equipment all over the Earth, blanketing the entire Earth in radar fields. First time humans have ever been exposed to that. In 1968, there was the Hong Kong flu, and it was the first time the Earth has a protective layer in the Van Allen belt, which essentially integrates the cosmic uh, fields from the sun and the Earth, from the moon and Jupiter, etc., integrates that and essentially distributes that to the living beings of the Earth. And we put satellites emitting radioactive frequencies in the Van Allen belt. Within six months, we had a new viral pandemic. Is it starting to make a little bit more sense now? Private companies plan to launch tens of thousands of satellites into space to beam internet to customers on Earth. Elon Musk's SpaceX alone has announced plans to launch 42,000 satellites as part of its Starlink internet project. If this happens, SpaceX will, by itself, be responsible for about a five-fold increase in the number of spacecraft launched by all of humanity. Why viral? Because the people are poisoned, they excrete toxins, they look like viruses. I don't look like a virus, thank you. People think it's, an, it's a flu epidemic. In the 1918 the, uh, epidemic, the Boston Health Department decided to investigate the contagiousness of this, so they, believe it or not, took hundreds of people with the flu and they sucked the snot out of their nose and injected it into the healthy people who didn't have the flu, and not one time could they make the next person sick. They did this over and over again, and they were not able to demonstrate contagion. They even did it with horses who apparently got the Spanish flu and they put bags over their head and the horses sneezed in the bag and they put the bag over the next horse and not one horse got sick. You can read about this in a book called The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg who chronicles all the steps in the electrification of the earth and how within six months there was a new flu pandemic all over the world. And I will only finish by pointing out that there has been a dramatic and quantum leap in the last six months with the electrification of the Earth. And I'm sure a lot of you know what that is. It's called 5G, where they now have 20,000 radiation-emitting satellites, just like the radiation-emitting thing in your pocket and on your wrist and that you use all the time. That is not compatible with health. What's the most annoying thing? There's nothing more annoying than when dodgy internet ruins a perfectly good Netflix and chill. 
But could SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk's new Starlink network project be about to change this? Blasted off from a Falcon 9 rocket, Musk successfully launched the first 60 satellites of thousands that would deploy in the hope to eventually provide a low-cost, high-performance internet access anywhere in the world. It essentially means rebuilding the internet, but this time in space. So how will Starlink work, and when can we expect to benefit from it? I'm sorry to say it, it's not compatible with health. That is a water destructuring device. We are electrical beings, and the chemicals are only the byproduct of those electrical impulses. And I'll finish with anybody want to make one guess as to where the first completely blanketed 5G city in the world was. Exactly. So when you start thinking about this, we are in an existential crisis here, folks, the likes of which humankind has never seen. Um. This is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads, by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. And I don't want to go all Old Testament prophet on you, uh, but this is something that is unprecedented. The, the putting of 100,000 satellites in the very... Lungs, perhaps. ...blanket of the Earth. And by the way, as I was going to say earlier, this actually has something to do with the vaccine question. And this got brought home to me because about a year ago or so, I had a patient who came in who was totally fine, a surfer and all, and then he broke his, he works as an electrician putting in Wi-Fi systems for very wealthy people. Electricians have a very high mortality rate, but he was fine. And then he breaks his arm and he gets a metal plate put in his arm. Three months later, he couldn't get out of bed and was total, you know, heart irregularities, just total collapse. The susceptibility has to do with how much metal you have in your body, as well as the quality of the water in your cells. So if you start injecting aluminum in people, they become receptors for absorbing increased electromagnetic fields, and that is a perfect storm for the kind of deterioration of the species, which is what we're now experiencing. People like Elon Musk and the Google CEOs who literally run the forefront of technological advancement and society and plan the direction of society as a whole are not normal people like you and me. They think differently. They think outside the box. The thoughts that they entertain are far more interesting, grandiose and wild than you can possibly imagine. So let's take a look at what kind of things that these people are into what they like, what they enjoy, and what they think about on a daily basis. It is completely different to what we think about. Connecting the brains of animals together, the animals can be thousands of miles apart, they start to work as one, almost like a biological computer. This is a template for what they want to do with humans. Here's another guy, he's another UK professor. Personal computing will become intrapersonal and intracellular. Each human neuron will be hijacked by a self-growing, self-repairing molecular network. Computers will be networks of polymer filaments grown inside together with a human. Anyway, so if you're concerned about all this and you and you want to see where this is going, you can just look on YouTube for something like this, something that's black and that might be gooey, and this one odd TV. I actually searched for this as well just to give you an idea of what it is. It's like uh, nanotubes and stuff like that carbon can be dumped from the atmosphere and uh, in certain fields perhaps coordinated by the gigahertz frequencies nets that are going up around a place plus that little sort of microchip thing that mr billy boy or mrs billy boy gates was trying to get us to take, injected into one of our right hands. And this is uh, written about in the Bible, so 
we know it's been planned and prophesied. Not such a good thing to take. Uh, yeah, people have been finished for talking about this kind of stuff. Like this guy. Disappeared. And yeah, this is a slightly dark underbelly. But what interested me was that a morgue is death. And Elon's... I don't know if Elon has anything to do with it. I don't know anyone else called Elon. But his name is in this. Elon's Morgue. I wonder if that term is uh, highlighted in Google and YouTube. Possibly just been red flagged for saying that. What is Elon's wonderful morgue? I wonder. Morgue means death, of course. Does that mean Elon's death? Who knows? Who knows? I hope I haven't stumbled across something that's going to get me finished or disappeared. But anyway, let's just watch the rest of this. Seeds of the networks will be injected into embryos in the first month of their development, and they will form a gigantic network inside the brain. Computers will be inside us. They will span all living creatures in a united computing network. Oh, crap. If that doesn't turn your stomach, you're not a human being. These are scientists. This is where this is going. This is how this is developing. It requires 5G. This is a book called The Scientific Conquest of Death. And this is a chapter by a guy called Ray Kurzweil, who's the head of DeepMind for Google. And he says, it will be routine practice to have billions of nanobots coursing through the capillaries of your brains, communicate with each other, as well with our biological neurons and with the internet. One application would provide full immersion into virtual reality. And if you didn't understand that, basically he says he's going to plug your brain into the internet by 2030. Now, you need to understand these are the very, very serious players. They require 5G to do this as well. Well, in Stone done an interview on him. He wants to use his technology to bring his dead father back to life. You have to understand what, what these people are about. These people are, going to, are setting the course for your future. Other people have got more common sense in his book, uh, Post-Human Future, because this is what they're talking about. They're taking his technology and going beyond human, post-human, transhuman. Okay, this is where they're pushing all this. There's lots of things he says, but effectively, if you've got an elite who are transhuman and you've got normal humans who just want to live their life, you've got a problem. Not everyone can or wants to receive the same level of enhancement. Haven't got time to get into what those enhancements are, but we've got them. For example, having a mesh put in your head, human rights may be threatened. And the same issue of superiority would apply to the question of inequality. Some people might not be able to afford it. And the reality is what he's saying is, if you look to history, you look to nature, what happens when you get a superior species? What does it do to the inferior species? It subjugates it or removes it. And at the highest level, they're talking about the human race being removed by this technology, by AI. This technology is so advanced, it is absolutely frightening. This was the ninth conference. They got in, we're on the 11th conference. Uh, beyond humanism, okay? This is why you need, this is why they're rolling this 5G out. There's a whole thing behind this, okay? It's not just simple 5G. Down at the bottom, they're talking about it. What it's also worth noting, this is seriously discussed, is the formation of new cultures and societies which consist of non-human subjects mingling with humans or forming their own separate and previously unseen worlds. They're talking about the new AI um, brains, okay? The new AI things that are coming in. Who's heard of synths? They're building synths now, okay? Which is a kind of synthetic human. This was futile. I tried for years. Okay, to, to be powered and to be embodied with this, con this alleged kind of conscience, consciousness, which is from an artificial intelligence. Oh. So 5G is central to all this, is I'm showing you documentation. This isn't conspiracy, okay? This is scientific documentation, whether you're aware of it or not. I'm going to show you now a clip. I played it before. Some of you may see it. This guy you're going to hear is Geordie Rose or Gordy Rose. He is a developer with a company of quantum computers. Quantum computers are used by NASA. His computers are used by NASA and Google and others to develop the AI technology, the AI thing that's going to be in this, this new synth bodies, okay? This kind of consciousness. These computers already connect outside of this dimension with two to the 500 power dimensions. That's from their white papers and their literature two to the 500 power dimensions they connect. And he's talking about using this intelligence from these dimensions in these machines to bring them to life. Now this is actually for real, this is not a joke, and this is him speaking. Listen very carefully. I don't know if any of you are uh, turn of the century weird fiction fans, but there's this guy named H.P. Lovecraft, who's a very famous American weird fiction author. And he exposed a, a view which is called cosmicism. And the essence of cosmicism is cosmic indifference. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not gonna care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. 
So this transition is really, really massively important for our entire species to navigate. And going back to that thing that Sam Harris was saying, nobody is paying attention. So like AI, one of your main worries in regards to the future? It, yes, it, it's less of a worry than it used to be, uh, mostly due to taking more of a fatalistic attitude. Hmm. This thing is happening in the background while people bicker about politics and what, what's going to be in the health care plan in the U.S. And underneath it all is this rising tsunami that, if we're not careful, is going to wipe us all out. Now, at this point, I have to mention that I do not share this belief whatsoever. Beliefs have never been more than just beliefs. But they do play a provable and active role in shaping our reality. The devil is in the details, and always has been. That's why we have to remember the bigger picture. And the bigger picture it does say that we're heading as fast as possible on our way back to the golden age. Okay, so 5G is a component of this. This is what you need to understand. That's the leading guy in the world. NASA has his computer. This is not a raving lunatic down the pub talking to you. I think 5G is one of the final nails in the coffin before AI comes in. And when AI comes in, but the reality is, I've looked at this in great detail, far more I can go in today, and I do not see the human race surviving this down the line. In times when there were no electrical currents, when the air was not swarming with electrical influ influences, we're talking 1917, it was easier to be human. For this reason, in order to be human at all today, it is necessary to expend much stronger spiritual capacities than was necessary a century ago. So I'll just leave you with whatever you can do to increase your spiritual capacities because it's really damn hard to be a human being these days. So thanks for listening. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. You will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie Nobody where listened. the robots are going to fucking take over and you're freaking me out. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. No. There's a very fine line between what is natural and what is engineered. I have one question to ask you that might help you make a better decision for the future of humanity. And that is, do you make decisions based on fear or do you make decisions based on love? And whom do you think is making decisions based on fear? Does... Elon Musk look like he's afraid? Does he look like he's given up hope? Does he look like he doesn't care? Does he look like he's a more of a fatalistic person? Or is he optimistic about the future? Or is Thomas optimistic about the future? Does it look like he's given up hope and that he cares? Which one of those two people do you think is fighting for the future of a healthy humanity? Is it clear to you because if it's not clear to you, if you cannot see a person for what they are, we're in big trouble. Could heart-based intelligence and a phenomenon known as discernment, which is to be able to use your intuition to tell whether something is good or bad, could this be the most important skill in the future that will make or break humanity? and save us, or send us diving into the pits of an artificially intelligent hell. Only you can decide. The future is in your hands, literally. The future is in your belief. What do you believe? Do you believe we need artificial intelligence to help humanity with health? Or, like me, do you understand health? Do you know that it's simple? And that we already have all the cures that we need on this planet. And that they've just been held back by a dark cabal more interested in profit over health. And a dark government more interested in money and control 
than in your health and your awakening. Let me know in the comments below what your feeling is. Would you support Thomas or would you support Elon? This is probably one of the most important questions that we face in the near future lying ahead because it implies a lot of things about you, yourself, and about the direction that humanity may be taking pretty soon. Anyway, I trust you. I believe in you. I believe in humanity. I believe in EQ, emotional intelligence, and I believe in IQ as well. But most of all, I believe in a balance between those two. And one more thing, if you think that this video is useful for you and that other people could find some use in it, then please like and share. It helps. It will help. It will help me. It will help you. Hopefully it will help humanity. I mean, that's the real goal here, is to save humanity from Elon Musk. This is Chris from Create Health, and may the force be with you.